Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. I hope you're having an amazing day. By golly, the GPU market is kind of interesting at the moment, isn't it? The RTX 4080 has pretty much fallen flat on its face, and like Humpty Dumpty, it just can't get back up again. It is getting absolutely trounced in terms of the sales in the marketplace with tons of availability still just because of the high price. The card itself is decent, of course, but that doesn't mean anything if it's priced so expensive and so close to the RTX 4090, especially when you account for custom AIB designs. Therefore, most eyes are on AMD and what they can bring to the table with the RX 7000 series. And so we have this video where we're gonna discuss not only the availability in terms of the numbers of cards which will be on store shelves, but also the fact that there will be custom models coming later. And we're gonna discuss that along with a ton of other very intriguing stuff happening in the tech industry right after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also of course sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's give credit to Board Channel's news. Of course, I will link them in the video description. As most of you guys know, the mid of next month, so that's going to be the 13th of December, the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT will both launch. So they're going to cost you $899 and $999 US dollars respectively. However, that is for the reference designs. So the non-reference cards, the ones which obviously have higher clock frequencies, they're going to have, you know, better coolers, whatever else. Those are going to obviously cost more money, almost certainly, but they also seem to be not on store shelves at the initial launch. It's going to take one to two weeks later. There is no reason specified here in this information. Now, what I've been told is basically the same thing, um, that the custom designs will be coming later. I actually got this information a couple of days ago, but um, as viewers know, there's just been a lot of stuff happening in the channel, so I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, but yeah, normal services, I've said multiple times, will resume pretty, uh, pretty soon. But basically, I've been told pretty much the same thing. So let's move on to the actual numbers available at launch. And I want to give credit to my drivers whose sources have told them that the RDNA 3 graphics supply will actually be better than the RTX 40. Now, for those who don't know, the RTX 4090 had around 100,000 units available in the launch window. Obviously, those cards sold out really quickly. But as of the time I'm recording this, certain 4090s are starting to become kind of more available. The Founded Edition cards, good luck to you, but many cards are more available now. Uh, and the RTX 4080, well, as everyone knows, it's not exactly in high demand. According to this information, however, the 7900 series will be more readily available than the 4090. Now, personally, as regular viewers know, I've heard very mixed things on the availability of the cards. One source told me it's going to be about as good as RDNA 2, and another one said that it should be pretty decent. Honestly, I'm not really certain at the end of the day. It's kind of mixed-wise. I'd probably give the nod towards my drivers because they've got more updated information on this, so I'm going to probably say that their info is right. What I will say, though... You know, the normal thing, just, you know what to do. It's a GPU launch. Like, I would love, I would love for there to be an abundance of supply where we don't have to worry and you can just, oh, you don't get off work until 7 p.m. that night and the GPU launch was at, like, 1 p.m. That's fine. There's more than enough to go around. But, obviously, that's not necessarily the case for everyone. Personally speaking, um, what I would suggest and uh this has been my strategy for a couple of things although it didn't help me for the 4090 launch but i managed to get one recently anyway um it's like if your friends are not particularly interested in picking up the product just ask them to try and you know 
go to a certain retailer and pick one up for you uh and i you know kind of get a couple of friends in on it that's like you know kind of like been my strategy and it worked for the playstation 5 and xbox series x there are other things you can do as well but that's pretty much been what i've done anyway um the, it becomes even trickier of course because the other big deal is that the custom cards as i just mentioned a moment ago they're not going to come out for a couple of weeks later now amd could change all of this at the end of the day as i'm recording this we're still several weeks from launch but I suspect many people are going to be deciding, you know, like hammering that refresh button and kind of like on the on the retailer page of choice and saying, well, do I just pick up the reference design or what? I would personally suggest just waiting for the reviews, see what the reference designs are like. Uh, in my personal experience with AMD's RDNA 2 reference designs, the 6700, and I think it was the 6800 XT, They've both been pretty good, but obviously custom designs like the you know Gaming X Trio that we've bought on the channel for um, the 6800 XT, they generally are cooler. They run a little bit, you know, they generally can overclock a little bit better, so on and so on. So it's kind of up to you on that one. It's going to be very interesting. Speaking of interesting, there's some intriguing information. I'll give credit to WCCF Tech for this, although initially it was reported by Digi Times. Uh, TSMC's wafers are becoming more expensive, or more accurately, the free NM wafers. So basically, this is just pretty much par for the course. Long story short, denser nodes are typically more expensive to produce. And so, according to their information anyway, we're looking at a 25% increase over 5NM. Now, obviously, you can say to yourself, well, if the GPU is smaller, then that's great. But obviously, if the die is the same size, so to put it another way, um, if AMD are producing a die that's like, let's just be really, really silly about this and just use like ridiculous numbers just to get the point across. This is not obviously how they scale. But let's just say that you produce a die which is 300 uh, mm, and then you were to like shrink that down on 3 nm, and it was like, I don't know, 25% smaller, which obviously doesn't happen because that's not how it scales. But let's just assume it was then that's okay but the reality of course is that dies obviously are still going to have to be pretty large and that's why i think that chiplets are going to become even more important particularly with nvidia at the end of the day you can only do so much because yields are a thing you know like what's the what's the 1490 i think it's like i think it's i can't remember the exact size it's over 600 um, and it's absolutely ginormous like what are they going to do like they're going to get to things like rectical limit so i think hopper is almost certainly going to be um it's going to be chiplet based uh, on the larger side that's what i've been told by sources and honestly it just makes sense at some point or another because nvidia for example are just they're just cramming so much stuff into their gpu you know you've got the custom accelerators like ray tracing you've got the the tensor cores and obviously all of that stuff plus the you know the massive absolutely huge l2 caches and all this other stuff at the end of the day all of that you know just eats up space so i think they're probably going to go you know in a similar manner to what amd have with rdna3 and obviously rdna3 does allow a lot of scalability there they can easily create a die with a denser node just a little bit bigger and they can cram in a crap ton of uh alus and they got obviously certain things like um well mcds for example they don't specifically need to um to shrink those i mean obviously there are you know a couple of benefits like you know the actual size of the chip itself but generally speaking some things just don't shrink as much and it's going to be the same for like you know zen's iod for example and i also just want to mention real briefly samsung have secured free nm advanced chip orders from nvidia qualcomm and others now what i have heard about nvidia is they tend to especially early on in the chip's life they tend to kind of hedge their bets and create chips or rather you know a next generation product with a couple of different process nodes in mind so i wouldn't be surprised if they are considering using samsung it's going to be very interesting i mean it's also possible that they may go data center with one and let's say gaming gpus with another it's going to be very interesting long term how nvidia amd and intel all kind of end up scaling their chips um there's a lot of there's a lot of intriguing stuff of course which is happening in the tech industry just by and large and i think the next couple of years is going to be very interesting just to see how everyone's like maximizing the throughput of their chips 
but that's probably a conversation for another time. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, well, it's YouTube, and I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.